everyone, we took Nathan's suggestion and decided to take a trip down here to Killens Pond State Park, just south of our state's capital, Dover. At Alapocas Run, we learned how important rivers like the Brandywine are to our towns and nature. But what about these ponds? Have you ever seen a pond this big? How did this even get here? I think we needed to talk to someone here and find out. So I found Crystal here. This is Crystal, a park naturalist for Killens Pond State Park and an expert on all things here at the park. So the park here itself has uh, been around since 1965. Uh, the park is around 1,500 square um, acres and the pond itself is around 66 acres. Very cool. So when we're at the Brandywine River, Nathan had told us about some of the cool things that the Brandywine River had to do with Wilmington's history and what people had used it for. Mm -hmm. the, is there any interesting things you guys could tell us about what people have used this pond for? Certainly. Um, Killens Pond has a great history and uh, actually our friend Eric down at our Murder Kill River area will tell us all about that. Awesome. So we came down to the other side of the park to find Eric, another park naturalist here at Killens Pond. So Eric, Crystal said you'll tell us a little bit about the history here and where are we standing? We are actually standing still in Killens Pond, but we are overlooking the Murder Kill Bridge at the pond and history plays a really vital role in the park itself. The most vital role that water provided actually was for indigenous groups and colonizers here was travel and from that trade. While it might seem odd to think about from our point of view mm -hmm. with all our cars, trucks, and planes moving everything, the waterways was essential for travel in earlier times. And they were the mainstay of the lives of both the indigenous and the colonizers who came here. There's a reason so many cities and towns sprung up and started really near water sources. The river allowed them to travel at a better pace than just using horses or walking and trade and settlement really moved inland along some of the great rivers like the Hudson, the Susquehanna, and of course the Delaware, which feeds the Murder Kill River that, and flows into it. So people were already using these waterways to help travel around and trade their goods, but this pond wasn't always here, was it? No, actually it wasn't. Killens was not always a pond. Before it was just another free flowing part of the river, the Murder Kill River, and early colonizers came and they decided to dam up a part of the river, which was not too uncommon as only three of the 32 or so ponds in Delaware are natural, all of which are found in Sussex County, but they dammed the Murder Kill River as they did many others to power their various mills. And in Killens case, the mills that we had here were grist and saw mills. But now I'm wondering if they use the water here to run mills, just like we saw up at Alapocas Run, why would they have want to put so much effort into making a pond when there was already this river here? Um, couldn't they have just used the river like they use it at the Brandywine? So that's actually a great question for Crystal back at the Nature Center. Awesome, let's go see her. So we're back here at the Killens Pond Nature Center where Crystal is going to tell us a little bit more about the river and some of the cool wildlife you can find in this area. Well, Northern Delaware is a little bit different than Central Delaware. Um, so the areas up by Wilmington and Newark have much more hills and rocks, while the area down here is a lot more flatter around Killens Pond. Okay, so the water was just too slow moving here to run a mill. But how does dam in the river and turn it into a pond solve this issue? That's a good question. So have you ever taken a running hose and folded it over on itself to stop the water from coming out? What happened when you let go of the hose? There was probably a huge gush of water that came pouring out of the end of the hose. But after that huge rush of water, it flowed normally, right? Well, the reason that so much water came out the first was because of the pressure that had built up behind the bend in the hose. The water still wanted to flow somewhere, but had no place to go. The same thing will happen to a river if the flow is stopped or slowed down. By putting up a dam, it holds back a lot of water and creates pressure that can then be used to power the mill. They do this by creating a direct pathway right to the wheel that then gets spun by the movement of the water and creates the energy for the machines in the mill. Very interesting. So people made this pond to create more energy from the slow moving river and use that extra water power to run their mills and help them make things. Very cool. But since this pond was man-made, do any animals live in it or is it just kind of like a big old pool? Yes, there are many different species of animals and wildlife that live in and around Killens Pond. We have many different types of fish, including a largemouth bass, 
catfish, perch, carp, pickerel, bluegill, and then of course we also have the always popular turtles that you might see around the pond. The most common being the red belly cooter, which is a large water uh, turtle that has a dark top and then a red belly, which is where it gets its name. We have two red belly turtles here at the Nature Center in the park. The Nature Center also has a common musk turtle and a spotted turtle. Aside from fish and turtles, we also see a variety of bird species such as great blue herons, amphibians such as bullfrogs and fowler's toads, insects such as dragonflies, and occasionally we even see a beaver. There are many other animals that live in and around the park uh, such as eastern box turtles, white-tailed deer, red foxes, owls, butterflies, and bees. So Crystal brought out some awesome turtle friends to check out here. So. So yeah, we have two turtles here. Uh, we have an aquatic turtle and a land turtle. Um, the big difference between the two is actually the shape of their shells. So if you can see this guy here, the water turtle, who is our red belly cooter, he has a very flat and oval shaped shell, which is great for swimming in the water. He also has these really big webbed feet that help him paddle and uh, swim really fast in the water. So his main source of defense is going to be his speed while swimming around in the water. This guy over here is our eastern box turtle, uh, and he is going to live on land primarily. His shell is a lot more dome shaped um, and rounder, and he does not primarily use speed as his source of uh, escape from predation. He actually uses uh, his shell for uh, a, like a little fort. Um, so what he'll do is he'll close himself right up in his shell and hide in there if he feels threatened or endangered. His feet, as you can see, are not webbed, uh, they're pretty small and flat, and they're mostly used for walking and digging around. Awesome. Thanks so much, because it can be so overwhelming, all these different types of animals. So now we kind of know a little bit of how to figure out which turtle is which. Yeah. Thank you. So I never knew a pond could be so interesting and important. It is wild to hear that this was made by humans, used to run mills and machinery, and also became a significant habitat for animals. So, Eric... A lot, um, when we were at Alpocas Run, Nathan told us some of the interesting things that we could do to help protect these areas. Do you have anything you recommend? Absolutely. One of the main things you can do is shopping local mm -hmm. um, or even growing your own produce and fruits and veggies and all stuff like that. Uh, even reusing plastic water bottles, either from just a water bottle you have, reusing it a few extra times, or just buying a reusable one. That way you don't have to use the plastic ones anymore. Interesting. Thank you. I, we appreciate these. These are all really good to know. Sure. Cool. Of course. Thanks so much for showing us around and teaching us a ton about Killens Pond State Park. But I have one more question. We've already learned a ton about how important bodies of water like the Brandywine River and Killens Pond are. But where do we go next? There are so many other types of bodies of water in our region. So when many people visit Delaware, they often come for one specific reason particularly during the summer, the beach. There are so many fun and cool things to be done and seen at the beach. Plus, Delaware has some great beach history, as well as provides great habitat for so many different animals. Awesome. Hmm. The beach does sound like a nice place to be on a hot summer day like this. So we'll take your word and head down to the coast. Thanks. Wonderful. Yeah.